All right, so I want to go over some of these comments here. Uh, there's some really good ones here I want to address. and uh, So let's start at the top here. Uh, truth sets you free. Um, he says, I don't think it's so ridiculous that a giant could have been 18 feet. The Bible does not give a direct height to them as far as I know. So it could be anything above average. And then he says, Goliath was nine feet three inches, six cubits. So he was, Goliath was six cubits in a span. And so, um, let's go take a look at that verse real quick. All right. So the the question would be how how much is a span? And from what I understand, a cubit is from your elbow to your uh, fingertip, which is about a foot and a half. And a span would be your hand. Now, there's the Egyptian cubit, there's the Jewish cubit, there's different measurements for each. And so, on the on the small end, if you will, six cubits would be nine feet. And then, you know, I don't want to get. I've got into that before. I don't want to get into it, but it, it's something you can look at and. Um, you know, I think the Egyptian cubit is like 22 inches, 22.1 inches, or something like that. Doesn't matter, don't care. But um, 9 feet, 3 inches, okay. 10 feet, okay, whatever. It They're extremely tall, uh, much taller than what people are today. But they're 18 feet is a little bit too much, in my opinion. Now, maybe, they, maybe there were... Um, uh, people that tall don't know don't care it, it, the fact you know the fact that they were taller you know somebody that's six foot six is extremely tall to me because they're you know almost six inches taller than I am about five inches taller than I am so um, the idea of somebody being nine feet that's Boy, that's insane. And then 18 feet, that would be like me being in a second story window, sitting next to the window, looking out the window and somebody staring at me. That's outside, standing, looking at me through the window. That would be creepy, wouldn't it? Well, anyways, um, the, this uh, Goliath, he was a champion. So to me, that says that he's he was one of the bigger ones. Right? And being nine he doesn't necessarily mean he's the tallest one but my guess is he's as tall as anybody and so nine ten feet seems right to me uh, 18 feet seems uh, a little bit too tall but it doesn't matter you know it really doesn't uh, I think it's going a little bit too far but the thing is um, you know how can you be too critical of somebody that says 18 feet tall when you've got a book called the book of Enoch which is not a book of Enoch it's a fairy tale and this fairy tale says that they, they were like 300 feet tall or 300 miles tall or something something stupid and I can't go along with that all 18 feet okay maybe maybe 300 feet no way no way at all all right, so and then he's got another comment here. The Bible speaks about some books we do not have in the Bible of today. For example, the book of ja Jasser, Joshua 10, verse 13. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down but a whole, about a whole day. All right, so I want to address that the book of Jasher and the other books um, uh, and before I move on so first of all let's go let's just, we have to establish something is the Bible from God and that's really important because that's gonna determine your faith and your faith is going to determine your understanding. All right, so let's kind of work backwards here. Like I pointed out, I think this does not get talked about enough. 
But even today when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be lifted. The veil shall be taken away. So, this is about faith. And in order to know and understand the Bible, you have to have faith. You go here to the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All right, And who has fear but him that has faith? Right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All right, and it's, that requires faith. It's always been about faith. All right, and of course Noah was the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. All right. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. It's always been about faith. So now let's go to Psalm 12. I want to show some verses here that hopefully will strengthen your faith. Starting in verse 6, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth purified seven times thou shalt keep them O Lord thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever the words of the Lord are pure words and of course we see Jesus says heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away all right so languages will come and go, but the word of the Lord endures forever, forever and ever. All right, and let's go to, uh, what is it, First Peter chapter 1. Let's scroll down here. All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. All right, and you think about faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Where can I find the Word of God? Okay, and then of course, uh, man cannot live on bread alone, or bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. And this is in Deuteronomy 8, repeated in the New Testament. Jesus says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Right? So where, if you believe that, then you have to believe in a perfect Bible. You have to believe it. If we have to live by every word of God, where is it? And of course, in the English language, it's the King James Bible. Now, <clears throat> If you believe that while well, there was books in the Bible that were taken out, then you don't believe that Bible is from God. And you believe, you have to inherently believe that man is in control of what God says. And that's not the case at all. And I'm telling you very strongly, God is in absolute control of his book. Right, and we even got verification of this. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. It says it somewhere. Somewhere it says it. All right. I believe. Right there. Isaiah 34. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read right there so we got verification there's a book of the 
Lord. Now we could go through this quite extensively. Um, you know, every time Jesus says, it is written. Okay, let's do it this way. And that's numerous times. Oh, oh that's a lot of times. Alright, so... Um, so why isn't Jasher in the Bible? Well, you could theorize many reasons, but the fact that it's not in the Bible uh, most assuredly is for good reason. All right? it, now, there's no doubt that that book existed, but there's also reason why it's not in the Bible. All right. And then any book today that calls itself the book of Jasher cannot be trusted as the word of God. What we have in the Bible is trusted as the word of God. And so when the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All right, so all scripture, and that would include all scripture in the Bible that you hold in your hands all right and if you believe God is in control then you then you have to believe that what we have is enough and there we're not going to get extra knowledge by reading extra biblical books which are not extra biblical books at all if we want that extra knowledge and wisdom then that requires faith. All right, it's always been about faith. And you cannot have faith if you believe the Bible is insufficient. All right, that shows a lack of faith. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So the key, the secret to knowledge and wisdom is faith. It's always been about faith. All right, and the but it is true the Bible does speak of books that are not in the Bible, and we could point to a lot of examples of that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean that these books that we know of today is the Book of Jasher can be trusted. Just because the Bible mentions it does not mean those are true books. Uh, Pastor Alan Didio. is another false teacher. I'll check that out here in a second. Not a troll or CMP. -er. I don't know what a CMP -er is. Grew up in the Baptist Church before my falling for the world. Grateful to be back now, though I go to no building. It is great power at work now that keeps flat earth anything but self-evident. Have you found any problems with SDA? Yeah, the Seventh Day Adventist. Uh, big problems with uh, with them. No question about it. Uh, you know, first of all, it all goes back to why are there so many denominations? And it still doesn't make sense to me. It's one of the very first questions I have when I became, even before I became a believer. Really. But Seventh Day Adventist, uh, I I would say <laughs> there's so many problems. I, you know, just how about this? Just believe the Bible. How about that? Rather than believing church doctrines, which if you're going to believe church doctrines, you might as well be a Catholic. Because I went to a Catholic uh, church when I first became a believer and I, I wanted to talk to them and ask them to understand what they believe and they believe tradition over the Word of God it doesn't matter what the Bible says church tradition trumps whatever God says that, I got a big problem with that so you take that philosophy 
and you apply that to all these denominations, if it's the same philosophy, then it's a bad practice. Right, so I don't go for any of these church traditions that uh, these denominations follow. So the SDA, uh, main the main problem I would have is this idea that Ellen, is it Ellen De Degenerate or whoever it is? SDA Ellen Ellen White all right so the claim is that Ellen White was a prophet of God it's so basically it's the same thing as Mormonism and Islam and it's the idea of dispensationalism which I wholly reject all right, there's nothing Ellen White is going to tell anybody that is not already uh, in the Bible and, and if she's saying something that's not in the Bible then I would not believe it at all and I don't remember the whole history of this uh, if she predicted the end of the world and that sort of stuff there's just absolutely no uh, you know there's no reason at all to put all your faith and trust in Ellen White you ought to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and so that's the problem with I have with Ellen White it, it promotes dispensationalism and there's nothing new that she could tell you and if anything that she tells you that's not already in the Bible I would not trust it at all and then I think uh, I've heard some of the SDA um, people preach a got you know, repent of your sins gospel you know this idea that well uh, Jesus died in vain and his death does not cover your sin but what covers your sin is if you say I repent of my sin All right now, if, now I don't know I wouldn't make that exclusive to the SDA church but uh, no matter who you are that's wrong okay all right so um, you know I just don't understand you know and I don't understand I don't want to know everything about the SDA all right the Seventh-day Adventist Church don't want to know don't understand it all but that's the problems I would have I would not trust anything this woman says I would only trust what God says does that make sense and uh, Richie says, Me and Math Power Land were the only channels I could find in 2013. And a year later, people became out of, and a year later, people came out of the woodwork, and there were so many people doing flat earth videos. Yeah. I noticed it more in 2015 than in 2014, but in 2014, it did start to catch on. And in 2013, as far as I could see, there was uh, fake clouds in the sky. There was immortal souls. The fake clouds in the sky was in uh, England, Britain, whatever, somewhere around there. And then mortal souls in Australia. And then in South Africa, there was uh, Roy, Rory Cooper. I can't remember if he had a different name at that time. Don't remember exactly, but um, the thing about Math Powerland that that the, what bothers me is he's not a Christian. How can you claim to be uh, a pursuer of the truth and not be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ? Um, so what, in my opinion, what Math did that was great was he showed pictures and said, is this a planet or is this uh, not a planet, basically. And so he made all these images that looked like planets, but they were 
just stuff that he just made up that he created on his own to prove the point and he was a funny guy with a good sense of humor and um, appreciated all the work that he did now in 2013 uh, math was uh, he was busy painting nude women he'd sort of fallen away from doing his comic stuff but then once the flatter started to pick up he got back into it I'm not sure what he's up to today but again this you know whoever it is if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ what is the point of anything that you're preaching right he's definitely trolling yeah this guy was trolling but um, I thought I would address it anyway and that's the question of time zones and Talia Rose, the oldest Christian lineage lineage, is in Ethiopia. They have the book of Enoch in their Bible. The book of Enoch was talked about long ago. It disappeared until the 1700s. At least that's what I have found. Also, there are 90 canons that were removed from the Bible. Alright, so that that goes back to what I was talking about earlier. Do you believe God is in control of the Bible or do you believe man is in control of the Bible? And it's really a matter of faith, right? So if you don't have any faith in God, you're not going to believe God is in control of the Bible. And it's odd because you, what, do you believe God parted the Red Sea? Do you believe God can heal the sick and the maimed? And God can raise people from the dead. But you don't believe God can give us a book? That even though he's done it. And he said he would, he's doing it. He's done it and he said he's doing it. Alright. So let's go. First of all. The very first book. Of the Bible. Or the very first Bible. Was written on two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Now that the stone and all that uh, is great, but that's not, we don't have to learn what's written on a stone. In fact, you, you, if you know the Bible, you know what happened to those tables of stone, the very first Bible, and that is Moses smashed them to pieces. All right. It's not the tables of stone that we see so many people seem to, um, they're putting their trust in something that does not exist, something that's been broken. They say, well, you go, got to go back to the originals. Well, the originals were smashed to pieces. There are no originals. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away, shall not pass away. So, the Word of God endures forever, right? You don't have to learn Hebrew. You don't have to learn Greek. You don't have to learn Ethiopia, whatever their language is. You don't have to learn Aramaic. And like the Muslims will tell you, you have to learn Arabic. See, well, you got to learn six, seven languages to know what God says? No. No. That's not the case at all. You go to um, uh, you go to uh, Acts two, right? And I probably could have worded that better, but um, how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Where's that at? Here, I forget. There it is. Verse 8. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. So this miracle, uh, you believe this can happen, but you don't believe God can give us a perfect Bible? It doesn't make any sense to me. All right, so what happens was here uh, there was um, the word of God being spoken, and every man could hear it in his own tongue tongue 
which ought to, which tells me that the Word of God is not stuck in one language. It's not stuck in one time period. In fact, we have, um, we could go uh, to Isaiah. For with stammering lips and another tongue will I speak unto this people. All right, and then we get confirmation of this in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 14, In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. Did you catch that? It's important. In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet, for all that, will they not hear me, saith the Lord. God is able to speak in all languages, for all time, forever and ever. You don't have to go to foreign languages. And when you are um, ignoring your own language and looking at foreign languages which you do not understand, that means you don't trust God. You are t trusting people to interpret the Word of God for you. You're trusting man to tell you what God says. You are questioning the Word of God and putting your trust in what men say God says. And then we could go draw a parallel, connect a dot here, in Genesis 3, when the serpent gets Eve to doubt the word of God, and the serpent said unto the woman, "Ye shall not surely die. For, go back one verse, excuse me. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither, lest, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And... Oh, we got to go all the way back to the first verse. See, this is why I need to keep reading the Bible. I keep forgetting. The very first verse. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made, had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question mark. Getting ye to doubt what God says. The same thing is happening when you um, don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands and you go to a concordance. Yea, has God said? And then you put your trust in what somebody else says God says. And uh, again, I strongly contend you ought to believe the Bible you hold in your hands is the Word of God. If you don't believe it's perfect, then you can't say it's the Word of God, because God is perfect. All right, and God has promised us that uh, He will give us, that He has given us His pure Word of God. The Word of God is pure. It can't be pure if there's a problem with it, right? If you have to trust in interpreters which I consider to be the serpent to tell you what God says every word of God is pure he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him all right and then of course um, there's a verse I gotta figure this out oh no don't do this what is uh, what is the verse I'm thinking of here? Let's do it this way. It's in Isaiah. No, oh, no, oh no. I don't remember how it goes now. So this is why I gotta read the Bible more often. Right here, Isaiah 59. As for me, this is my covenant, which is a promise. 
a guarantee with them, saith the Lord, My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of, my, out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. All right. The word of God is in our mouth. It's not in somebody else's mouth. And not in your mouth. It's in everybody's mouth. It's in your mouth and in your seed's mouth and in your seed seed's mouth. It's in every language all throughout time, forever and ever. And that's a promise and a guarantee from God Almighty. Alright, so we, it, and it really it just comes down to faith. Do you believe the Bible you hold in your hands? Alright, and uh, so uh, again, <laughs> the idea that you have to learn Hebrew, Greek, and Ethiopia, believe anything but the Bible you hold in your hands, that's not coming from God. Alright, that's coming from deceivers. And of course, when you go to like Matthew 24, and they ask about what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world, the very first thing that Jesus tells us or warns us about, he says, Take heed that no man deceive you. The deception in this world is worse than ever, worse than any time in human history, I contend. It's only getting worse. And I've seen it get worse in the last 50 years than ever before. I mean, it's worse today than it was 30, 40 years ago. That it seems to be like it would have to be a miracle for anybody to get saved in today's world because everything is against the Word of God. And so I would strongly encourage you not to hold on to these ideas that go against believing the Bible you hold in your hands because the deception is greater than ever. If you don't want to believe it, you're going to be given a thousand reasons not to believe the Bible. It doesn't matter because the Bible's still true and it's going to prove out at the very end. The truth endures forever and all these phony Johnny Come Latelys, you know, all these phony doctrines, they're going to fade and fall away and be erased from existence forever okay and um, Mike says he's got a lot of critter vids though has a lot of critter vids is a critter like a like an animal I'm not sure what that is I, I'm not really fully aware of everything that David Carico teaches. Uh, I do like the guy. Um, he's not afraid to offer his opinion. From what I've seen, appreciate that. I just wanted to make some uh, minor corrections to what he was teaching, so that somebody might have a better understanding. And ultimately, teaching these things helps me to understand better myself. He was close. He was close. Yep. Yeah. And that's right. That, that's the main thing right there. Jesus reigns forever. All right. You see this over and over and over and over. These people teaching this idea that Jesus is going to reign a thousand years. All right. Welcome years. to, let's see, I guess this is... Well, that guy's loud, isn't he? Here, let's just... Let's go right here. I'm guessing. I was watching this this here, morning. Remember, this is the this is the thing we've always used to describe the tribulation, and then of course uh, the Lord comes back in a second advent right here, and that's the Armageddon campaign. And then after that, what does He set up? He sets up His millennial kingdom. Boom! Right there. That's not in the Bible. So Jesus is going to come back, and then He's going to reign for a thousand years. That's the suggestion. That suggests that Jesus does not reign right now. 
if Jesus, if Jesus does not reign right now in your life, how can you say that you are saved? I mean, this is simple stuff, but it to hell with what the Bible says. These people want to promote this idea that Jesus reigns for a thousand years, and I don't know why. Is it so that maybe, hey, if we can persuade God, then we can take over when Jesus is done reigning. That's the only thing that I can think of, right? But the problem is right right now if Jesus does not reign in your life right now how can you rightly say that you're saved and it, it look at verse 33 in Luke chapter 1 and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end he reigns right now and forever his kingdom is not coming to an end there is no millennial kingdom and if you would actually just just read. I mean, it doesn't make it won't take you five minutes to read twelve verse or fifteen verses. Excuse me, fifteen verses. That you know, it, if you can read three verses in a minute, then this will take you five minutes. I don't even think it'll take you five minutes. You focus on verses four and six, right? And it says. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It does not say Jesus reigns a thousand years. It does not imply it. No, not in Revelation 20. Not anywhere in the Bible. And it says, And they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. It does not say Jesus reigns a thousand years. Right now, we are priests of God and of Christ. We are a holy nation. We are a royal priesthood. And we are called to preach the gospel to every creature all right and the second death has no power over us we are born of God just like what we read in John chapter 3 that which is born of the, the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit so we are born of God right and the, therefore the second death has no power over us and we could read numerous verses all throughout uh, he that believeth on the son has everlasting life right now you have everlasting life if you are born of the spirit of God and he that believeth not the son shall not see life but the wrath of God abides on him all right so very important to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Right. And when you are born of God, of course, Jesus reigns in your life forever and ever. Once saved, always saved. You cannot have peace without it. You cannot have peace if you believe you can lose your salvation. It's impossible. But we know those of us that are saved know that we have everlasting life we shall never die we shall never perish alright so the idea that Jesus stops reigning it's not in the Bible it's and the idea itself is ludicrous because it, I just want to know I just want to hear somebody say, Jesus, what happens when Jesus stops reigning? Now, I've heard people say, well, Jesus hands over the reins to his Father. The problem is, Jesus is God Almighty. All right. And so, he's handing the reins over to himself. And what kind of, you know, <laughs> what are you teaching here? That Jesus is not God Almighty? Um, again, that, that just shows that uh, you need to read your Bible just like me. You need to read your Bible, right? Good. And, uh, you know, what, what am I looking for here? I forgot. Uh, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. That's Jesus. Jesus manifest in the flesh all right and you go to I mean even go to Revelation I mean in Isaiah calls him mighty God and they go to Revelation chapter 1 
I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus is God Almighty. And then let's circle back to Luke 1. You want to say Jesus hands over the reins to somebody else, the Father? Are you the Father? And while you're considering that, take your magic marker and cross out Luke chapter 1 verse 33. Just cross that verse out. Because it says he reigns over the house of Jacob forever. It doesn't say he reigns and then he hands over his reign to somebody else. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. So there's a serious problem here when you teach this idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years. It's not supported by the, in the Bible anywhere at all. And it's completely contrary and contradictory to what the Bible is telling us. And I try to make this as simple as possible. Doesn't matter though. Doesn't matter. Nobody listens to me. That's why I want to keep preaching this. Maybe somebody will it'll catch on with somebody. It's unbelievable. Maybe somebody will get it. Somebody with much more influence than I got. Because this is non-stop. This is every day. People are teaching this idea. It's like a whole nother religion. The millennial reign of Christ. There is no millennial reign of Christ. What is the millennial reign of Christ? There is no millennial reign of Christ. It's unbelievable. Non-stop. Constant. People pounding this drum and it's not in the Bible anywhere it's incredible all right so that's enough wait let's see what this is here <laughs> oh, what is this non nonsense Je Jesus is a transliteration his name is Yeshua all right so that's that right there tells me this guy does not believe in any Bible anywhere on earth at any time in human history and um, essentially he's saying you can't believe I and mean, this is what I'm talking about was been talking about you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands the Bible I hold in is in my hands Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus his name is Jesus right there in the, that's what my Bible says and I believe my Bible is from God wholeheartedly 100 percent convinced there's no question about it and that's unwavering. That's not going to change. All right. Now we go to Acts 4. It says here, just to make sure, be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that there is no salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved it's only by the name of Jesus Christ only by the name of Jesus now you come in and you say uh, I got a different name that I mean what's it, what purpose is there to change the name of Jesus if you do not absolutely hate the Lord Jesus. There is no other reason other than hatred for Jesus. Oh, what am I looking for here? Uh, it's in John I'm looking for. If the world hate you, ye you know that it hated me before it hated you. I typed in first, not first, it's before. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. This is absolute 
utter hatred when you reject Jesus and then pretend to oh it's a transliteration Transliter transliteration from what would be my question and this goes back to Genesis 3 yea has God said getting people to doubt what God says yea has God said question mark yea has God said Jesus no his name's not Jesus it's Yahshua and there, there's no common sense about it whatsoever it's basically you're saying it's a transliteration from an imaginary Bible that does not exist and that I don't believe in anyways that's what you're saying you don't believe in any Bible anywhere on earth at any language at any time in human history whereas I believe the Bible I hold in my hands is from God it's from God to me huge difference and what is required what is the main difference between the two of us and that is faith I have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and I believe he has given us the pure Word of God and you obviously do not and I don't see how you could have any problem with me pointing that out because you're and literally admitting you don't believe in any Bible whatsoever All right, you don't believe in any English Bible any Hebrew Bible any Ethiopian Bible any Greek Bible anytime anywhere in history and uh, that there's that shouldn't be a problem for you the problem is uh, the lack of faith right so again uh, there's nothing more important than faith and let's go to I pointed out earlier uh, Noah became the heir of righteousness which is by faith and of course oh what am I looking for here uh, for what verse is that for by grace are you saved through faith right and not of yourselves it is the gift gift of God not of works lest any man should boast so it's always been about faith nothing more important than having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ all right so that's enough anyways um, I appreciate these comments here again uh, going back um, here I think I covered everything pretty good if, any follow-ups I'm all oh, Richie Jacobs I'm gonna take a look at Alan Didio. never heard of this guy maybe I'll make a, a quick video regarding what I see out of him but thanks for the comments appreciate it let me know if I'm too tough too rough <laughs>